Hi, I'm Tammy Silvers of Tamarini's and I wanted to offer you a tutorial today on paper piecing. Now, before we get started with the steps for paper piecing, let's talk about some basic supplies. When you're going to paper piece, I'm going to recommend that you have a pressing cloth. Now, here's one of mine and I'm just keeping it real, folks. A uh, pressing cloth is really nothing fancier than a piece of muslin fabric. Now, mine looks pretty grungy, pretty stained. It's actually clean, it's been washed, but this is what's going to happen after you use it over and over again. You're gonna use the pressing cloth on your ironing surface, and this is going to protect your ironing surface from any ink that might transfer from your paper piecing pattern. So again, just a square or rectangle of muslin, and I recommend washing it between projects. The other tool that's really, really useful is the add a quarter. And if you have an add a quarter, or if you're going to get one, I'm going to recommend the add a quarter plus. Now, no affiliation whatsoever. I get zero um, revenue off of any sales, but I absolutely love this tool. The add a quarter plus is the old add a quarter tool, and you're going to see me use it in the demo, but it also has a nice tapered edge that you're going to use for folding. Now, if you don't want to purchase something like this, you can use a plain old postcard. You're just going to see as we go through the tutorial that you're going to need something to fold your edge back. Now, here's an example of the block that I'm gonna walk through with you today. And this block is paper pieced. Why do you want a paper piece? Well, paper piecing enables you to make very uh, complex or complicated shapes or odd angles that might otherwise be very challenging without doing a template. So that's one of the joys, one of the beauties of paper piecing. Now. Paper piecing is, just like it sounds, we are going to be piecing on a piece of paper. Your design is already printed on the paper and these are going to be your stitching lines. Now I'm working on a light box or a, a light LED mat, if you would. And I'm gonna turn it on because I find the LED mat super useful, especially for the first few steps of paper piecing. And here's why. I'm going to be using my fabric that I've already cut, and I'm going to be placing them on the wrong side or the unprinted side of my paper. And having this light box enables me to see the proper placement. Now, I can't speak for all paper piecing patterns, but I can tell you for the ones that I have designed, you're gonna be working with squares or rectangles, very basic shapes. And for your first two pieces, you're going to start just as you would with any piecing with raw edges aligned. Now stick with me because this is where I see some folks in classes get turned around. You're going to want whatever the fabric is for your first piece, you're going to want that fabric to lay against the back side of my paper. So for example, my space right here is going to be my blue fabric. So I want my blue fabric touching my paper. And then the green fabric is going to become this long point right here. So I'm gonna want the green fabric under the blue fabric. Now. The reason that the light box works so well is because when I lay my fabric down, I can see through the light box and I can see that I have a quarter of an inch overlap. Now, just like with regular piecing, that's our goal. We want a quarter of an inch overlap between the first piece and the second piece. Now stick with me, all of this is going to make sense. If right now you're thinking, what, she's talking Greek? It's all good, you're, it's going to make sense. Now, if you're following along and you've placed your fabric and you think you've got it right, the next step I'm gonna recommend is what I call the pen test. And the pen test is super simple. I'm going to place a pen through the fabrics that I have layered and I'm gonna place the, I'm gonna pin along that sewing line because this, these solid lines, as I mentioned earlier, are my sewing lines. So I've placed the pin along that sewing line. This enables me to, whoops, see I didn't catch it. So it's a good thing. This enables me 
to flip my fabric over. So I'm going to pin one more time. All right, I think I've caught them both now. Yes. So now I can flip my, my paper piecing pattern over. There's my pin. This is actually going to be my sewing line. And I can take my fabric and flip it back because I'm trying to cover that first peak right there. I'm trying to cover that with the green. And when I flip it, now I can look on the light box, is that green fabric covering that second triangle? Oh my gosh, it is. Awesome, so I know my placement is good. So what's my next step? My next step is to go over to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew from outside edge the dash line, which is your outside edge, all the way along that first line and into the seam allowance over here. That's my first step. So what does that look like? That's going to look like this. So I've sewn along that line. So you're not probably gonna be able to see my stitches. I sewed with a gray thread, but if you can kind of see, there's my stitch line. I sewed from outside edge all the way over to outside edge. You can sew past the seam allowance because we're gonna be trimming this down at the end so it's not going to matter. My next step is going to be to press. And I want to encourage you, take time to press very well. And now you can see why you're gonna want that pressing cloth. The pressing cloth, if we pretend that my light box is my ironing board, it's not, and I would not iron on my light box because that would totally destroy it. But if this were my ironing board, I would place my pressing cloth down. I would place the print side down because we don't need to iron paper, we need to iron fabric. And then I'm going to iron and I'm going to press this very flat. But see this ink, because it's down here against the ironing board surface, that's why we want that pressing cloth. Because sometimes, depending upon your printer or depending upon whomever printed the patterns for you, sometimes the ink can transfer. So that's where the pressing cloth comes in very handy. All right, so we've sewn our first seam, we've pressed. Now, this is where the add a quarter comes in very handy. And again, if you don't have an add a quarter, you can use a postcard, a uh, stiff cardstock. Our next sewing line is right here. We need to trim. So if we place the flat side of our add a quarter or our postcard along that second seam line and we fold our paper back, we now know where to trim. And if you get something like this, it's okay. Just pop those stitches let it lay nice and flat because you sewed past where you needed to, and that's great. Then we're gonna take our add a quarter and we're gonna flip it over and there's a raised edge on it. Now, if you don't have an add a quarter, you can use a ruler. So if I didn't have an add a quarter and I had a regular ruler, then I'm going to place my quarter inch line on that fold and I'm going to trim and I can cut on this LED light because this right here is actually a cutting mat and it's designed for that. If you have an LED light that does not have a cutting mat on it, you're gonna have to move the LED light and cut on your cutting mat. But now I can cut and I've given myself a quarter inch seam allowance because hey, we are still piecing for quilting so we're still using a quarter inch seam allowance. So now it looks like this. Now we know where our next piece of fabric has to go. And what does that look like? It's going to look like this. So see, I've already trimmed. Now I take my next piece and I put it down. Now, word of caution to you. I mentioned in the beginning that oftentimes we paper piece because our angles are odd, the, the shapes are complex. Remember that pen trick that I showed you? Well, I'm gonna encourage you to use the pen trick with each placement because you wanna make sure that you get your fabric placement correct. So let me give you an example. If I just matched up the raw edges, the raw edge of my piece to the raw edge of my next piece of fabric, okay, and I think, okay, this looks good. I've got these raw edges lined up. I'm gonna flip this over just like I did before. And again, I'm going to pin along that solid line that's going to be my next seam line. 
All right, and then remember, I'm gonna flip it back over. I wanna flip this fabric. Okay, I can already tell because I can see with the light box, but when I flip this over, I need to cover this whole square right here. But my fabric, when I look at the light box, my fabric is only coming to here. So what that tells me is I need to shift my rectangle down. I need to shift my rectangle this way so that I can cover that corner. And that's where the light box really comes in handy. Now, if you don't have a light box, don't despair. You can always use a window. You can create a light box by... Um, placing something translucent between um, a stack of books and put a light underneath it, you can improvise. But if, if you can, a light box is going to make this much, much easier. Okay, so I shifted my rectangle down. I think I've got good placement now. So again, I'm gonna flip this over and again, I'm going to pin on that solid line. And then when I flip it over, I want to see, am I covering everything that I need to cover? So here is my first blue piece. I've already covered that. There is my green. This is the next piece on the paper piecing pattern that I want to cover. And I can see that indeed my fabric does cover edge to edge. So I'm golden. All right, so I'm going to go over to the machine. And again, I'm going to sew on that line. And what does it look like? It's going to look like this. And then y'all already know what the next step is. You're gonna flip this over. You're gonna use your add a quarter or your postcard or your card stock. And you're gonna fold back against that next line. You're gonna pop those stitches. You're gonna trim quarter inch seam allowance and you're going to keep piecing. Now for this particular pattern, this is just an example. This is what my block looks like untrimmed. So I've taken those steps that I just outlined for you and I followed this all the way across and now my block is completely pieced. So what do I do at this point? Well, I'm going to turn my paper piecing pattern over and using your add a quarter or using a regular ruler, you're going to trim along that outside dashed line. That outside line is your seam allowance. So you're gonna trim all the way around the block. And when you do that, then you have, so I'll flip it over. See, I have trimmed it down to that dotted line. And when I flip it over, now I can see what my block is going to look like. Now, one thing I do wanna point out to you, and I'll show you with the untrimmed block. Sometimes with your paper piecing patterns, you'll have you see how floppy those outside edges are because those pieces are loose? Once I trim them down, one thing I like to do is set my machine to a basting length, which is your longest stitch length, and I just run a few basting stitches here in the corners in the seam allowance. So when I flip it over, let me point these out to you. It may be easier to see on the paper. So I've just got a few basting stitches right here in this corner and right here in this corner, and now it holds that in place. See how nice and stable? Note the, flat, the fabric's not flopping around on me. You don't have to do that, but it's a nice thing to do uh, because it keeps your fabric in place, and then when you go to piece it, you're not gonna have any fabric turning over on you. So again, let's just go over this one more time. When you're paper piecing, you're going to have your paper patterns, I recommend a pressing cloth. Remember your pressing cloth can just be a piece of muslin. And I recommend either a tool such as the add a quarter or have a postcard or some card stock handy so that you can fold back. Now, a couple of things before you get started on your first paper piecing project. If you're making copies yourself, if you haven't purchased a pattern set, then you want to make sure that you make all of your copies on the same printer. That way, all of the pieces are going to be the same size. When you get ready to sew, you're going to want to reduce your stitch length. Now, you want a smaller stitch length because when we're finished paper piecing, and when we're finished with our project, we're gonna have to remove that paper. So we don't want our stitches to pull out. So we want to reduce our stitch length. 
you do not want your stitch length so tiny that you can't get a seam ripper in there because I'm just gonna say mistakes can happen. So you want the stitches to be large enough to be able to be um, removed with a seam ripper, but not so small that you can't see them. My machine defaults to a 2.2. I take my stitch length down to a 1.8. Normally I sew at 10 to 12 stitches per inch, so I would probably reduce that stitch length to seven to eight stitches, or I'm sorry, um, 14 stitches. We want more stitches per inch. So you want to go to a smaller stitch length. Now I'm gonna be coming back later and we're gonna be talking about joining your, your paper piecing units, and we're gonna be talking about removing the paper and doing some other fun things with our project. But for now, I wanted to give you enough to get you started, and I hope you enjoy your project. 